I am very excited for this because, uh, you know, this is a person that I have followed for a while and uh, he has had uh, some amazing, amazing uh, ideas about how to use immersive content. And so I'm very happy to, to welcome him to our conversation. And I hope uh, that he is able to share some uh, innovative ideas on how to uh, really kind of wow your customer and, and uh, show them what is possible with the tools that we use every day and we are passionate about. So without uh, wasting any time, I'm going to invite in Paolo. Uh, let's see, round, big round of applause. And there you go. Hey, Paolo, how are you doing? Hi, Vinette. Uh, hello, everybody from uh, Seattle, Washington. But it's, it's morning here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, so, Paul, uh, first of all, thank you for, for taking the time uh, uh, to, to come here and, and really talk about your work. Uh, a lot of people are very excited. A lot of people have, uh, have said yes to this event. So there's a lot of excitement about it. Um, and I will let you start off with just giving, an giving some idea about who you are, what work you have done before, because I think a lot of people are very interested in that. Sure. So um, my name is Paolo Tosolini. I am the um, founder of a creative studio based here in Seattle. It's called Tosolini Productions. Actually, it might be even e uh, easier if I share my screen. I have a quick presentation so we can just follow along. And oh, yeah. Abs yeah, absolutely. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so let me, let me do this. Uh, let me go full screen here. And then I'm going to share my screen. And if the audience can tell me if you are able to see my PowerPoint, that'd be great. Can you see it? Let me, let me put it up there. There you go. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the magic of software to make it look nice. There you go. <laughs> is it visible? Uh, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think you should just go forward with it. Cool. OK. So to, who, who, who are we? Who, what is the Total Need Production? So it's a creative agency based here in Seattle. We have been around since 2014, and we focus on uh, business storytelling using emerging technologies. And for us, emerging technologies are several things, uh, from touchscreen solutions, which is our core business, to 3D virtual tours, to virtual reality and, um, and AR, aug augmented reality. So just to give you a little bit of a background, uh, um, we um, we are a B two B, so business to business uh, um, agency. Uh, we are small, um, not not not, uh, not too many people, and we are kind of a boutique uh, boutique agency. We are very focused on uh, innovation, on, uh, so research is in in our blood. We we, we really love to. Uh, figure out uh, what is next, uh, what, um, you know, experimentation and, and trying to pitch these ideas to uh, to our um, our clients. So I used to work for Microsoft. So Microsoft is our main client. And um, and then we, we extended to other uh, organizations. And then, by the way, so we t uh, when we interact with all these uh, Fortune 500 companies, um, uh, it doesn't mean that, that we only sell one thing. We try and pitch the, um, a variety of things. Um, but we usually start with, uh, you know, this uh, touchscreen solutions uh, that uh, were very popular during uh, before COVID, um, in, um, especially for events and trade shows. So we have been featured on um, uh, at a pre-Oscars party at the uh, World Economic Forum, Gartner, and so on. So. These are the our uh, bread and butter uh, is is really creating these interactive experiences on um, on, on big uh, that touch displays. I I hear some echo, Vinette. So just um, uh, no no that was on me. I was trying to see if if, if you can see the uh, thing on on Facebook and you can so I just okay, double cool. check. <laughs> and then, uh, so our second line of business is uh, capturing reality. Um, we started in uh, 2015. Uh, we fell in love for uh, 360 photography. A again, we, we are not uh, we're not the people who go and, and do the, all the stitching. So, so we, we love to focus more on the interactive side, and, and then um, uh, that's why we fell in love also for uh, um, for Motherport, and we won two awards from Motherport in 2017. The 
uh, Motherport uh, Service Provider of the Year. And then uh, we also love to figure out places to scan that are more interesting from airplanes to uh, medieval villages in France and, and other places. Uh, we experiment with different technologies. Uh, we got um, uh, the GeoCV, uh, we, we had the Insta360 and so on. And then uh, the natural evolution of, um, you know, of capturing reality is what do you do with it? Is it just uh, one, uh, one way to deliver it or can we do more with it? Uh, so we, we looked into using Unity uh, to, to create the VR, AR, prototypes uh, that then we pitch to different companies. So my, Microsoft has been uh, our main client for uh, for uh, some of our experiments. So we, we have done uh, some HoloLens experiences uh, and extended to, you know, I, I'm going to show you a few things, um, even if I cannot really show a real client, uh, client projects. But uh, I'm going to give you a quick of, um, uh, overview of, of, uh, um, of several of our prototypes. Awesome. Okay. So, so, so Paolo, uh, before before we before we go on to the prototypes, uh, what I wanted to maybe take some time uh, with you before we kind of see the examples is uh, is it is it possible for you to maybe uh, talk about your process of coming up with an idea to take to a customer or a client? Uh, do you identify do you identify an experience? and then take it to a client, or do you find a client and say, we can build this experience for you? How does that work? So the, the way we approach it is, uh, might not be necessarily the most uh, efficient, but it what fits us. <laughs> it fits uh, our, right. our lifestyle and it fits our interest. So the, the way we approach a client is, we, um, having worked for a big corporation before, I kind of understand uh, their their um, sensitive touch points. So there might be moments in where uh, they have to communicate uh, something internally, or they want to engage clients, but they cannot bring those clients to a location. So knowing how a corporation works, having worked for one of uh, one of these corporations, it helps to understand the dynamics of a big company. It they are completely different than. Um, than a small business. Uh, even the way that you approach and you sell to a big company is different. So they, they come to you because they have a specific need. And uh, then you fulfill that need, you exceed their expectations, and then suddenly you gain their trust. And that person, that sponsor internally in, in, in that company starts talking to you about uh, uh, to, to their colleagues about what you do. So there is an internal seeding of, of, of your uh, reputation that, that expands. So it takes time to get in the foot in the door. And usually the foot in the door is not necessarily the product that you originally thought. It could be something else. That's why I think it's important to diversify. At least for us, diversification saved us in many time, in many opportunities, because there was a market uh, uh, because a year, you know, budgets were low for certain things like events, but then we pitched something else. Uh, then the, the year after, um, maybe events were, were, were big and then we, we didn't really, uh, you know, succeed on selling um, anything else other than touchscreen. So it, it is uh, very unpredictable, but there are, se there are seasonalities where there are budgets, uh, there are uh, um, uh, specific needs and by knowing what, how a corporation works, uh, you can start seeding the thought that, that they should try something new down the road for a particular event, for a particular client or uh, something. But if, if you could come a little bit too late and then uh, it, the, it's the gone. opportunity is the, gone. The, yeah, the, the budget is over. And the I budget think, is I think, over. Right. And I think this is something maybe we can, we can just touch on for maybe a, another five to 10 minutes. Uh, I think Mick uh, from 360 Rumors asked the same question, which is how do you pitch uh, to to high-end client versus a mom-and-pop business? And I think the what you talked about is that the pitch is not a pitch. It is a series of pitches over the year and over the course of year. And then when uh, really the uh, the budget opens up, 
they say, you know what, I spoke to this Paulo guy who had this great idea and we can use this budget to hire him to do it. So that's kind of how I would imagine uh, you work with these large corporations, right? Right. So I, 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 again, I'm telling you what works in, in our case and in our approach might not be uh, applicable to a, a, you know to, to um, other other businesses, but this is how we do. You First do, of yes. all, we come with the angle of innovation. Uh, let's assume uh, we can we, we understand that there is a particular need. Uh, we, we have a, a a person in in a corporation that is open to experiment something new, but he needs something to show to their manager. Yes. I'm going to take the risk of creating a prototype, a prototype that. Uh, that, that shows the opportunity and he can share, he or she can share internally. That mm -hmm. becomes a sales tool in his hands to give it to and show it to his manager. Okay. So is, is it mostly a presentation or do you build like an MVP? We actually, sometimes we build something. <laughs> we, okay. we create an experience. We, uh, we scan, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a location. We offer a freebie. We mm -hmm. do something that is tangible. It's a PowerPoint that doesn't cut it. it if, we, if we talk about uh, AR, VR, we need to show a couple of things. First, uh, that we understand what they're talking about. So, and second, that we are able to do it. So Execute we are going it, to yeah. build, yeah, the execution. Because otherwise everybody can say, oh, we can do, um, we can do AR. Okay, yeah. show, me, show, show me something and show me on my topic. Because I can show mm -hmm. an AR experience that is completely unrelated to what the company does, and it will not resonate. But if you show right. something that aligns, suddenly people say, oh, I can identify myself in this prototype. Mm -hmm. Wait a sec. Now, the prototyping is potentially an expensive uh, proposition. Process. Because, yes. because you're, you're starting building things that, that uh, you know, it's expensive. So funding these prototypes, uh, is something that we decided to do based on money that we make on other uh, activities, <laughs> like uh, touch screen solutions. That, that's uh, that's uh, bread and butter. My, yeah, bread and butter. <laughs> and uh, it's it's something that sells, right? Yep. It sells. People understand it. That it's proven. Yes. Imagine if you have find an internal sponsor that uh, puts their reputation in line with their managers and with their peers. Uh, and they want to introduce something new. You need to lower the risk for this person to look bad inside his chain of command. Make sure he doesn't in, get fired. Yeah. He doesn't get fired. And yeah. he potentially, hopefully, he gets a bonus out of, bonus. you know, it looks yes. good, right? Yes. So what can we do for this person to look good? So he will repeat, he will put, a, you know, some risk and he will keep, uh, hiring us in the future. So we incrementally uh, add innovation, but at the beginning, it has to be a low risk feature that we sell first. Right, right. We gain the reputation and then we continuously pitch. Hey, look, we came up with this idea. Hey, mm -hmm. you might be interested on, of, of, of this. One out of 10, when we are lucky, it gets... Uh, okay. It gets a blossoms. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yep. Blossoms in something bigger, and yes. then suddenly, <laughs> you know, it pays off for for all this prototyping. So the, the keeping the keeping the cost of prototyping low is key. Mm -hmm. This this is a, and and this is why we are so prolific on uh, on, on on coming out with ideas. Um, in fact, if we go to on our YouTube channel, which I will show you later, you will see a bunch of prototypes. These are not necessarily all real projects, but right. the prototype gets you the foot in the door mm. and it, al it allows you to, to be labeled as the innovator. So next time when somebody yes. comes in and says, hey, I need something new because we have tired of seeing the Zoom call or the same thing, suddenly you come first in, the, in you know, first of mind. Yeah. So I think I think you know this is this is a great conversation and this is exactly kind of what I wanted to talk about. Uh, Mick has a lot of questions and I, I, I you know we're gonna go uh, we're gonna have a Q and A uh, at the end of the thing. But uh, you touched on a lot of great topics, uh, especially with the idea of 
how you get into larger clients or big companies and corporations uh, as the innovator. Because I think that is a very interesting uh, proposition for larger companies. Small mom and pop companies, A, don't have the budget and they don't have the, you know, uh, I would say vision or they can't really convert an innovative uh, experience into a customer. Whereas a large corporation uh, may, may actually not be very innovative. You know, I mean, obviously you have worked for Microsoft and these are innovative companies, but there are companies that, you know, are into manufacturing, for example. And, uh, you know, you could have a large factory in your, in your town uh, and they may be making a lot of money, but they may not have an innovative way to, to, take, uh, to take themselves to a virtual event, for example, or in a uh, big conference. And I think when, say, you know, you're in a city and, you know, there's a large, large factory, you go to them and you say, hey, look at this cool idea that I have built. And maybe you could use this for marketing your, your brand when you go to outside conference or you go to CES now. I mean, those don't exist anymore. But yeah. that, that is, I think, kind of uh, what you're trying to say, which is kind of be the innovator for these companies that cannot, cannot innovate because a, either they don't have the bandwidth to do it or it's, uh, you know, if, if somebody internally takes the, the idea of innovating, they can lose their job. But if they hire somebody else, you know, like if I pay you, I can put pressure on you, but it's very difficult for me to, to kind of create that innovative spirit within the company. Is, am I making sense over there? No, it, it makes sense. So as an innovator, yeah. we found uh, ourselves going against the wind in multiple ways. So first of all, we need to educate the client that they need something like <laughs> what we produce. Right. Right. Then we need to learn how to how to create, really? you know, first of all, we, we need to be capable to, of doing things. But even if we create a prototype, we need to pitch it to the client. The client needs to say, I need it. First, first roadblock. The second, it needs to find the money to pay you to make it happen. Yes. How do you lower this, this barrier? Uh, you, you, need to, you, you, you need to decrease the risk for them to adopt something new. Otherwise, it's easier to go for something that is proven, low uh, the minimum yes. common denominator. Uh, let's do a Zoom call, and Zoom that's call, it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> don't, don't, don't make don't make fun of live webinars. You're on one. <laughs> no, that's true. And I'm an investor on Zoom, right? So I bought <laughs> shares. So I, I believe in Zoom. And in fact, right. so here's another thing that uh, caught us unprepared. So th this is something that um, I thought um, my business was resilient, <laughs> but it was right. not necessarily true. With COVID, the Touch screens, which is our main uh, our main money making proposition, was very reliant on on events. When events disappeared, and then for, first thing, first of, first thing, and the second is uh, our reliance on uh, a small number of clients uh, with bigger budgets. That's fine, but when when you lose those b bigger bigger clients because they don't have the money or things change on their end. Yep. Suddenly, we feel that the, the, you know, we, we are pinch. in, in difficulty, yeah. right? We feel, yes. we feel a pinch. So the sales funnel is something that uh, I'm, I'm learning. It's, it's uh, very important always to have a variety, first variety of products uh, and variety of, uh, you know, a, a number of leads. Um, but in, in our case, we were relying on, you know, small number of clients. Uh, and and were relying on the big fish. Oh, yeah, the big on the big fish. Yeah. It's very, it's more, it's riskier, but luckily, you know, uh, we, we are fine, but uh, we are not giving up on innovation. It, even during the COVID time, I actually thought that this is a time when everybody's frozen. They, they, everybody doesn't know what to do. And it was last year, April, right? And so on. We started learning all different new tools that could have been useful down the road, like no code, uh, tools uh, to build uh, quickly websites, apps, and so on, something that could complement our offerings, but has to be online, not just off offline doesn't work, right? <laughs> has to be yeah. online. So we started experimenting a continuing innovation, 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 and pitching, pitching, pitching. Now, it doesn't mean that we got new projects for, for many months uh, because COVID killed our, our market. But now that the, these companies are filling the basics with uh, the Zooms and, and the video streaming, which, by the way, was a big money maker for everybody who was doing live streaming professionally, made very good a money. money yeah. 
a lot of money during this time. We are the nice to have for these companies. We, the, the live streaming is the must have, must yes. have. So they made a lot of money now, but as we felt, oh my gosh, so the, the, we are seeing all these people doing so well, but and we are the nice to have, so we come next. <laughs> and yes. I hope this, this, you know, coming next is coming soon, right? Yes, because we have all, yeah, we, are, we have always been the nice to have, you know, like the 360 <laughs> virtual tours and exactly. AR is always the nice to have. And, and hopefully, yeah, I and mean, I agree with you, I hope we become uh, essential. But the nice to have is when everybody has the must have, they start thinking, okay, we are all equal, but I am more equal than the others, right? As a company. So yes. I, I need to show that I'm different. So what is out there? And yes. hopefully by having seeded all along the way, all of these new innovations, they, they you know, remember us. <laughs> yes, yes, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, and I think I think one of the things that you know I wanted to kind of put across to a lot of our uh, viewers on the groups is that you know the way business works, and especially if you are a small business like yourself, uh, and most of us are small business, including our business, is that there is a way to grow businesses by getting a variety of clients or having a like a more two pronged approach towards getting the big fish, like you said, because. Once you get one or two of those customers, you know, uh, the way I, I try to kind of think about it is that you can eat bread every day, but one day you want to go to like a sushi restaurant, right? So one day you want to treat yourself with a big paycheck. And I think that's kind of what I, I look at it. And I, I try to tell people is like, if you want to move about virtual tours, right? Because a virtual tour, yes, you can make a lot of money. And if you create a repeatable sales uh, pipeline, yes, you can make a lot of money, but that sales pipeline might dry out someday. Uh, but getting these large checks from these big companies is really a very, because the, while the continuous work is a lot, maybe the execution part of it is not as much as you would imagine for the amount of money you get from them. You know, uh, uh, the amount of work we spend for a, a customer that gives us $300 a year is almost the same amount of work we put for a customer that gives us $50,000 a year. Because the, the customer that is giving us $50,000 a year, they have a process, you know, like you, you don't have to really worry about, okay, I send them the invoice, will they pay for it, will they not pay for it? A large company, if they say yes, they sign the contract, you send them the invoice, they have a process, the money's gonna come. It, it is a little bit more uh, uh, freeing in, 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 for, a, for a business to have that kind of approach. Uh, yeah, I, I or, agree. Yeah. The, the, Again, the, the levers when working with corporations are different than than the small business. The small business is okay. I only, I, you know, the, here is the two hundred dollars, you know, yeah. and then and then uh, you disappear. The sales cycle with the big corporation is, is longer. You resolve a problem. the The money is less. It, you you could charge more, of course. As long as you resolve a problem that this person have. And you make them look good, they will come back to you. Yes, they will come back yes. to you. Now, they need to be continuously reminded and inspired because once you resolve the problem, they could forget about you, and then suddenly you become okay. Oh, I've done one, you know, one big deal with this client, and and then nothing more. So, you you need to kind of be a a soft marketer. It doesn't work to be the hard seller, hey, buy from me, buy from me. And also be very flexible. Again, this is my approach. Other, other agencies might have a different approach. We don't have a sales team. You're looking at the sales team. I'm You're not the sales a, team. <laughs> I am, I'm not a sales person. I'm more of a, of a research guy. And then, but my approach is like a, a reminding people, look what are the possibilities that you can choose from. Yeah. And I, I see some, some of the um, I see some do, of the do, questions. Do you yeah. want to answer any of the questions? I, I yeah, sure. So, for example, in the, um, I, I, Mick has some questions about uh, how do you get the foot in the door. I'm going to get to, to this point uh, by showing you some uh, by sharing some, some examples that go beyond right, so the let, virtual let, tour. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. But the um, how do we take place? Um, so prototyping. Um, so this is the question. The, the question uh, is. In, in the case of virtual tours, does finding a customer have to take place in their space or product prototypes, in our case, tours, it, make sure different set, yeah. 
So uh, let me answer this. Um, <clears throat> if you can create a prototype that relates closely to their environment is much better than something that has, is completely disconnected. So for example, if I'm willing to take a, a I'm talking about virtual tours, it could be something else. Uh, in, in, in their offices, I, I'm going to offer the opportunity to create a prototype by 3D capturing, for example, a space that is relevant to them. It's a much easier sale sell that the capturing my home and showing hey look at me what what you can do right i have offered a lot of free i have done a lot of freebies but uh, i don't feel bad about uh, offering freebies to companies that potentially could afford 10 times right to to pay it yeah easy because we need to open the doors and to open the doors, it, it needs, you need to seed and to do some, you need to, to create material that can be uh, shared internally in the company. The person that I'm, I'm sending the freebie might not be the right one, but they may send it to somebody else. And if they don't identify in the freebie, they may say, it's not me, I'm not interested. And they're going to give you five seconds just by looking at it, and then you're gone. So we need, we need to reduce the friction and the risk that these five seconds are unsuccessful. And um, yeah, so, so I had another thought, but I, I lost it, so. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, let, let's go to some of the examples that you said. Yeah, you sure. Show us. Yeah. So when you're, so again, this is, uh, this is how we, we uh, conceive things. Uh, for us, immersive media, virtual tour is part of immersive media in general. We don't consider virtual tour just, uh, we, we just don't do virtual tour. Virtual tour is just a small business, a, a small uh, slice of our business. However, when we try to create mashups, what is a mashup? A mashup is, is, is when you take uh, different technologies and you combine them together in a, in a new creative way. So for example, we are a big fan of Motherport, right? We, we, and, uh, I know, I, Vinet, I know, Vinet. <laughs> but we started early. <laughs> we started early. No, no, in... no, no it's okay. I, I know that we, we love Matterport. We love to hate Matterport. You know, everybody in the group loves to hate Matterport. It's a great product, but you know, I think a lot of people have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> so the uh, well, the, the, we started with with Matterport, and, and the reason is it's simple. It's 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 easy. Uh, you yes. you could complain about uh, oh the quality is not perfect, but you know at one point uh, you have to put a, a stop about uh, being picky and just think about what the client really wants. The client wants a virtual tour of uh, their uh, TV studio, for example. Cool. Okay, we are going to create a proof of concept. I'm going to scan one studio which is enough for them to understand if they want to do the whole thing. And I'm going to give it for free. It, I tell you, to, to see the motherboard in Microsoft, it took one year. One year. Wow. And, and then, it took, then it took off until they bought their own devices. <laughs> so they don't do it anymore. And plus, they, in, uh, now, there are other dynamics there where they don't particularly uh, like the idea of using um, a technology that runs on, on competing cloud. That, that's another yes. set of issues. Yes, but yeah. the, but the, uh, think about uh, um, it, you know do, doing this, uh, the Matterport. But uh, what do you do with Matterport? What can we do beyond just the virtual tour and beyond just adding the tags and then the hotspots, blah, blah, blah? It's just the, the basic stuff. So we started exploring extracting the 3D data, extracting 3D data and importing them into Unity. And maybe connecting the motherboard to hololens now hololens is a microsoft product and it, they had a need to showcase cool stuff on hololens what mm. is cool then you know uh, what is cooler than showing a 3d model that you captured inside microsoft for example in hololens now you mm. touch multiple things you're you know you touch a product that they are interested to promote Yes. Timing, right? If I, I remember when I was working for Office at one point, I was I was uh, working with partners, uh, and there is a product launch. Before the product launch, uh, there is this strong desire of having a lot of partners that uh, support uh, a product that is not out yet. 
building on the beta, building solutions and so on. You know that the, as, the day that you launch, uh, this momentum will go away because then the product is out there. So you out need there, to yes. understand <laughs> when is the key time to engage with these companies? When, when is the highest moment of need? Is right. when they go to market with an idea or a product. Yes. So when HoloLens launched, they needed content. So we jumped on the bandwagon. We got two HoloLenses. We, we did prototype. We sold a, a, a project for them. And I, you know, it's, it's on our YouTube channel. But after a while, it wasn't anymore HoloLens. It, it was passe. It was something else. So we tried to, now it would be uh, Microsoft Teams. Teams mm -hmm. is everywhere. That's it's why exploring. we start, you know, that's why we start prototyping uh, ways to use Microsoft Teams and show 3D uh, stories, right? And then nice. not only that, so we have Teams, stories, and another mashup, right? And, and another element, for example, a se selected industries like manufacturing. When you combine multiple mega trends or, or, or topics, uh, you start creating unique value that it's difficult to replicate by another, another company. First, because you understand the client, but second, because you start adding complexities, right? right. How many people do motherboard teams and 3D? Not many, Nobody. right? Nobody. Yeah. And if you're the only one, then even better, then your price, you can, you can charge more money. So that's why ah. we, we, we are totally about uh, uh, experimenting with mashups. Right. The, let me show something because I think Mick wants to see something on this. Yeah, uh, yeah, Mick has a lot of questions. So, so let, let, let's, let, let's, let's look at your, some of your examples. And I think we have some time anyway, so we, we'll get to the questions. In like so time. I'm going to show you. Um, let me know if you see. Let me open it up. Um, the, what do you see? Do you see my YouTube channel here? Yes, yes. OK, I'm going to show you examples that go beyond the, the, the tradition of virtual tour, OK? So right. here are all experimentations. Um, so w w when you're thinking about uh, uh, immersive media, don't just think about um, uh, a, a virtual tour. What can we do with immersive media? We could do, for example, case studies. So this is a... a, a an experiment we have done, it has nothing to do with uh, a reality capture, but we took the concept of immersive media and created an infographic, not just mm. an infographic, X infographic, it's an infographic about how Microsoft uh, uh, empowers farmers with their own product. Again, this was a freebie. It, it is, uh, it, it, I, I'm exploring territories that uh, I have not been asked to explore by my client, but mm -hmm. I believe that they might need it. This is why I'm taking the risk of creating these prototypes. And because these prototypes have a life shelf, it, they talk about industries where Microsoft, for example, sells. They make a lot of money in these industries. I'm going to start pitching how to connect immersive media to their, in, to, to their uh markets so uh, these are awesome. all experiments right then so so paulo before before you go forward can you yeah. like just give me an example of an email that you sent now you don't have to show the email but because i think soft marketing is something that you said which is a very interesting topic which is because with most mom and pop stores or like uh, when you're doing these 200 300 dollar deals uh it's mostly like you buy it now and you're done but with soft marketing like how would you create a prototype and what kind of email would you send your client? Like, hey, check this out, do, do. like how, how exactly would you do that? Like say you created this one. Well, the, I have to say that the email has not been very successful for us to, oh, okay. to start the, the new approaches. It's more about the existing relationships. So for example, mm -hmm. if, I, um, if I've been referred to be, uh, to, for the touch screens, for example, if I've been referred to uh, to a different team and they, I know that they are looking for a particular uh, solution, I'm going to start pitching. First of all, I want to be focused on, on on answering their, you know, about their solution. But I'm going to start pitching softly every everything else that could go along that solution. It's more like awareness. 
it's more like saying, hey, have you considered also this, uh, this medium to, um, to tell your story? It's mm -hmm. true that uh, you're looking for the touch screen, but what about if, if it's an event, uh, what about doing something in VR or using cardboard or, or something like this? It's, it's a constant uh, trickling of ideas uh, that will keep them top of mind. Okay. By and the way, what, what, and what? Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you here. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, what is the department like when you when you think of it? Because there is marketing, there's product innovation, there's product launch. There's a lot of departments in large companies. I mean, Microsoft has a million departments. How do you how 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 do you identify who is the right person to talk to? Well, it, it, it all depends. So, for example, this is an infographic. Let me let me tell you a story. This is an infographic done for the team that uh, uh, takes care of their cafeterias. And you may say, mm. okay, so Microsoft has cafeterias, right? What, what, uh, this is actually a, a paid project uh, where we took, uh, th they had a particular need to showcase how Microsoft is very green. They, they take care of, uh, they, they recycle, uh, they transform uh, all the, 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 this food uh, that is otherwise would go wasted into uh, into energy that is then used to um, you know to, to power the you know the, the washing the, the dryers and so on. So the, the this is a story. This is an internal storytelling that was relevant to this team. It didn't start with an infographic. It started with a 3D tour of a cafeteria. But oh, then, we, okay. then we told them, hey, have you considered adding information to your, uh, to your 360? And uh, they, they said, no, what does it mean? And suddenly we start pitching all, all of this stuff. Actually, let me, sh let, me pitch, let me show you something else. So that's interesting. You first pitched them a virtual tour of the cafeteria and they looked at it and said you know what the cafeteria is okay but can we create an experience <laughs> that is amazing yeah that's great that's that's, well, you know, I mean, that's that's great well i'm going to show you the um, let me see if we can uh, i'm going to share a qr code let me see if i can share it with you and then you can actually okay. test it on your own <laughs> okay why don't you scan this all right, this is a real project, by the way. OK, let me put it up for everybody so everybody can scan it. Let's try. I got my iPhone here. OK, open in Chrome. Let's see, what is it? So this is another, and this is, again, this is storytelling. They wanted to tell the story about oh, how wow, much. That's great how much uh, uh, meat they are using in, in, in the company every day, right? Yeah. Now, who benefited this? You may say Microsoft, is, is, uh, it sells uh, Office and Windows and so on. There is a whole ecosystem of opportunities when you, when, when you talk to a company. Don't just think about um, what they sell to others there is internal consumption actually when i was to, when i used to work for microsoft i ran their internal youtube channel and you may think why why a company needs a youtube channel internally because they need to share knowledge and sharing knowledge means that you prepare your sales people your uh, you know whatever you need to to, to a, a method to distribute this content Suddenly, I wasn't. I, I was helping the company being being successful with their readiness initiatives inside. So even internally, there is a whole market there. There are teams that will never sell anything outside. That, that their only goal is to serve internal employees. They have needs. When a, when a, they. When COVID happens, if they want to train new employees about the, the campus or something, they will need virtual tours. <laughs> and suddenly, right. but that's an internal need, right? Internal yes. communication. That's another uh, another way to, to, to look into that. 
I have more stuff to show you if you want. Yeah, go for it, go for it. I think a lot of people want more examples. Uh, so just before you, you start uh, let showing- me even, Let me answer the anybody... question because th there is sure. a question about how do I create the, my, my, this virtual tour in particular, right? Uh, so this one was uh, one shot of a Matterport. It could have been done with a 360 camera with whatever. The And then we imported into Unity. I haven't done it. I'm not. I don't know how to use Unity. I have people using it for me, just so, so yeah. clear. And then uh, he added the graphics uh, in, in Unity. So, and then he took another shot in, in, uh, with a virtual camera so he could recreate the, the 360. Awesome. We are going down the path of mixing or recreating completely reality using these tools. And let me tell you why. You, not always you have the opportunity to actually access a real space, yes. right? Or they don't want you to go there. Think about the data center. You are not going to go into a data center because it, the real data center is secret. They don't want you to know how they color code cables and so on. But they want to tell the story of the data center in a way that shows how cool this company is, but without giving too many secrets. You cannot do a virtual tour. Now, to do that, you, um, you need to represent it synthetically. So you're going to just draw in, in 3D. And then I see more, um, okay. Uh, yeah, sure I mean, so, so, yeah, so I think what I'm gonna, I'm gonna before we go for because I think we only have 15 more minutes left, so. Uh, oh, okay. Right, so I think, it, uh, people, if you're listening to this, if you have any questions on uh, on any of the stuff Paulo can answer, uh, start leaving your questions. And Paulo, you can start uh, sharing some examples of, of some experiences that you have been doing so that by the time you're done, we can answer the questions. Afterwards. Okay, sounds good. So, okay, I'm going to close this example. I'm going to show you where we are heading right now. Yes. And we are heading towards this. Um, let me share this other screen here. We are heading towards uh, telling stories uh, on, um... oh, wait a second. I, I don't want, I was going to destroy our, can, can, can you see this? Uh, one, oh. Oh, one um, All right, here you go. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So let me let me load um, um, this example. So this example, actually, we have done it for a, a startup. Okay. And it's a, it's a local startup here in in uh, in Seattle, and they had a need of telling a story of their IoT device that will help uh, uh, people with disabilities. Rather than showing videos and demos by themselves, we t we are, are showing the story of how a passion and a doctor can work together. And this is a, just a sto uh, storytelling using 360, uh, 360 content, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, capturing reality, right? It's not, it's not technically a virtual tour. It's basically using the same components to exactly. do a storytelling kind of thing. Yeah. Exactly. Let me show you another example. Um, this one, actually, we announced it uh, a few days ago. This is a company that, that does, uh, this is a prototype. You may think, oh my gosh, there is a lot of work for a prototype. That's true. However, we, we looked for this opportunity because we wanted to have um, our, uh, we wanted to have a demo associated to a brand that does uh, cool things in the retail industry. So mm -hmm. here you can you can uh, go through content uh, and it tells the story of um, their products, uh, there are RFID products, scanners and so on, in a way that is different than just uh, uh, a virtual tour. It, it, it's, it's a virtual tour, uh, but uh, of a. Of a and, and how did you how did you kind of uh, get to this uh, get to this customer, for example? So I approached, so I knew somebody uh, who used to work with me, but I haven't talked to her for, for a long time. And I showed her a demo and I told her, look, it's not going to cost you anything. 
would you be interested in us prototyping something for you? Because events are going virtual, this could be one way to present your product in a way that, that hasn't been, uh, you might probably have not considered before. And she was very open, so she provided the content. We created the experience. She entertained this idea internally. I don't think they are ready now to move forward with uh, with the idea yet because I understand it it creates complexity and, and challenges, right? For to ch to yeah. change how, the way you do events, it's it's not something overnight. That's why uh, you need to keep producing. And, keep and, producing. And, and, yeah. Right. So, All right. So 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 Paul, one last thing, and then we go to the questions because we I think we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, I have a so I'm, let me let me reply to one of the questions here. Uh, what is the tool? The tool that we use here. So this is uh, Unity. Okay. We are using Unity to create um, uh, these environments, and in, uh, of course we we buy the assets uh, or we uh, uh, some of them are, are modeled by our VR designer. His name is Michael Gallums. He's, he's super talented. And, uh, but look at maybe, the- Maybe you should put his LinkedIn pro, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, he's very good, he's very good. He's on our website. Now, oh, okay. the, um, now, the way that we pitch it, so here's a soft pitch. We always have uh, our brand, but we start pitching also even other tools or other companies that we would like their attention, right? So as mm -hmm. I softly pitch, uh, what we do suddenly, oh, look, there is Motherport. And because there is Motherport there, I'm going to send this to Motherport, right? As, as an FYI for them or the, it's, it's, a, it's a soft pitch. Let me show you something that, that we haven't announced yet. So Ooh, we are- Yes. We are premiering here, something that you will, we will announce awesome. <laughs> in, uh, in uh, two weeks. Huh? Unity 3D, yes. So this is done in Unity. So one of the virtual expos is something that we are going to look at. And the idea is, um, okay, we can recreate uh, a space. We can put hotspots. However, there is this sense of emptiness that, uh, it's, it, that is given by the fact that there are no people. So we are experimenting mm. by putting people doing things that they usually do at an event, that they have fun, they are in a nice environment at night, right? And now you can navigate through and we can go to a, you know, let's go here. These are all fictitious companies. This is another prototype. But as we do this prototype, we also experiment different UI visual language on how to navigate 360 content that is virtual. It's not uh, capturing reality. So how do you navigate content that uh, it's, it's, it's uh, synthetic? So we are experimenting with uh, having a wayfinder, which by the way, you can switch into ISO, you know, whatever. They, they, these are just experimentation or you can uh, navigate sequentially, right? I can go from one, uh, from one booth to another. You can navigate within the same content. So right now, this is the fictitious company that sells VR stuff. But mm. what is like being in VR? Let's jump into a VR. Now here's all the creativity of our, uh, of our VR oh, designer. Oh, that is so cool. He loves to do, you know, to hike and so on. So he decided, okay, but let, let's let's pitch being in a mountain, and let's have uh, let's add infographics. The inf you know infographics might not be relevant, but uh, we show uh, the the idea of of um, of uh, using different mediums. Mm. But let's go back now to to the menus here. What happens if you if you have this kind, you know, if you have food? And again, I click the food. Now, this is a mashup of 3D objects hosted in Sketchfab. But not just that, you, you have annotations on top of Sketchfab, right? Yeah, that's cool. 
so I can navigate through, you know, the nutrition facts and so on. And then again, this is a demo. It the uh, the and, and this is this is, yeah. And so just to like again, like I think the interesting part is you talked about how you put in the money to create the initial kind of foot in the door. And this is an example where you invested money. To oh, build I totally invest money. Yeah. <laughs> I, right. I, it, it's it's an it's a never stop uh, uh, never stop uh, innovation because if if you if you stop it, then. Uh, it, 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 you're finished, right? Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. Let's, let's talk. Somebody talks about inception. So let, let's. Well, let's talk. Uh, so oh, here let's, is let's... a. I'm entering into an iglu. This is a Motherport 3D OBJ file imported okay. into this platform. I'm using Sigbeak, by the way. So I. I um, and suddenly the you may say, oh my gosh, what does it's motherboard inside the 360. Okay, then let's go hiking here. So this is all about the exploration. And we don't know what is right, what is wrong, but the, we are taking risks of, of uh, creating and be creative. Um, yes. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's kind of what the whole discussion I wanted to be is just like, you know, sometimes... Uh, we all need to like take some risks to be more innovative and and show the customers what they probably cannot see and and all the tools exist like I think uh, like you said you know this is this is created by Unity Seekbeak which is a great platform uh, yeah. and all of these and Matterport so you combine all of them to create this experience uh, and you invest some money and then you know you cross your fingers but there is a possibility that one of the larger customers goes like you know what this is really interesting and I would like to I like to hire uh, a Paolo to do it, and so I think that's the that's the key. I think you just show the whole process, you know, like investing in a little bit of ideas, being innovative by yourself, and then kind of taking it from there. Right. So something else that I I like to um to to, to like to to talk about is that the PR opportunities. There, are, can can you think about the ways to connect your passion, your business? to opportunities where there are influencers out there that would love to talk about what you're doing. So for example, this is a, an execution we have done for, a, for the author of a book. Uh, so he has done a book about AI. And we mm -hmm. said, OK, you talk about AI, about innovation. How about if we, uh, about, by the way, we surprised him. We, we just created this uh, AR experience he tweeted about. And I think it was 15,000 uh, views and so on. So this PR, yeah, these PR opportunities are all over. And sometimes mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you, 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 you have them, sometimes not. Um, let me show you. Um, so f this is another attempt. At, again, a lot of failures here. A lot of failures <laughs> to, to, <laughs> to, to create things that, in the interest of advancing innovation. So for example, we uh, we took a, a topic that is very dear to big corporations. It's like a, uh, how to be uh, responsible with the environment, right? Mm. We wanted to do a demo and pitch it to their uh, to their teams. Again, it didn't go anywhere. We didn't get any, any response, but it touched a, a topic that is important for them. And at the same time, we experimented a frame as a technology. So again, yes. another mashup. Not we, we don't just don't do the, an experiment just for the sake of doing it, but we do it to demonstrate that, that you can combine multiple technologies together and be the unique person who or, or the unique uh, um, business, right? That can do that. So here it is, another one: Unity mashed up with. Uh, a software called Intuiface that does touch screens and Motherport together. How many times you combine three things together? Oh, Not many, amazing. right? Yeah. Yep. And, and, and just, just can you give me like an, uh, uh, just like this specific thing that you did, which is the virtual staging configurator. Is that is that something that you guys built? Is that uh, is that something that? Yeah. So so yeah yeah, yeah. this is done uh, in uh, in uh, yes we did it. <laughs> and can you give an approximate cost of what it took to? Oh, this is that? a prototype. It's not a product. 
No, yeah, no, to create the prototype, how much did it cost you? Just the the you internal, the internal costs are something that it cannot be. Um, the, I, I cannot share internal costs. So, so these are like okay. a, sometimes is work of love, sometimes is thousand of dollars. So it's um, it, it it depends. Okay. I I I'm, I can't share. Uh, you know. Sorry. It's, it's, yeah. No, no, that's fair. That's fine. Yeah, I understand. But the uh, um, the, the let, let me sh let me share you uh, with you. You know, other examples where uh, we demonstrate. So he, here is, uh, for example, uh, we wanted to. There was a new feature that Google uh, that Google created, uh, and it was the, the Google um, Earth Stories. Have you ever heard about that? I didn't hear about them yes, until yes. actually. Oh, did you hear? Okay, they, good. But I think, but I think they shut it down again. Like, yeah, I, they shut it down. Yeah. But it was something that uh, I wanted to get the attention of Google and saying, "Hey, look, uh, we are using your your product, uh, but not just uh, using in a normal way. Let's uh, add uh, a couple of layer of uh, mashups to it. So we blended the uh, motherboard within that." <laughs> and created something that is fairly unique, right? Or um, connecting uh, uh, touch screens to AR. This is a demo actually that uh, um, I, I was at a trade show. It was called Digital Signage Expo. And um, I used this, this software, by the way. And then I came up with the idea on the spot, can we do an AR demo of how you can start from a touch screen and navigate to a 3D model right there, right there at, at the trade show. Mm. And I I built the whole thing on, on, my, on my mobile device, on my phone. Wow. And um, I had the 3D model. I filmed the, you know, uh, our UX designer here, Al Ali, doing the demo and I edited on the way out of the of the of the trade show, and I published it. So it was a, another idea that uh, went to market right away. Did it create a, a big uh, ripple effect on the business? I don't know, but it helped. <laughs> but yeah. wait, wait a second. But it helped the company, uh, which is is, is called the Intuiface, uh, to pitch uh, me as the innovator on their platform. Mm, that it. helps. Because right. next time they have a their salespeople hear about an opportunity, they think about me potentially. I hope so for to create uh, uh, something new. Got it. So so uh, so let's go to the. We questions. are running out of time, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go to the questions. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you back to the screen, and I'm gonna start from the top. Let's let's take mixed question. Um, all right, so here we go. I think uh, mixed question about what is your advice uh, for new photographers who are thinking about using other people's work as samples for their own pitch? Uh, please let them know why this is harmful. I think this has to do with when you said uh, about uh, you know doing prototypes for people without capturing uh, customers' client. But I think Mick is coming from a different place. But you, you, if you feel free, you can chime in. Yeah, so new photographers who are thinking about using other people's work. Um, well, if um, you probably always want to get permission, right? Uh, I, I our work is is original. We may use uh, vid demos. Um, um, let, let me stop sharing for a second here. Can you see me? Yes. So we try to to do all always original work. Sometimes. Uh, if there is a YouTube video that we use it as a as a prop, uh, just uh, as as a tag, I think that's that's fairly fair uh, to to use it. But uh, we always give credit to everybody who is involved. And also, when we do partnership with somebody else, even if somebody does five percent of a of a of a contribution, we give credit to them because they enabled us to create a prototype that uh, fulfilled the particular need. Plus. By adding their name to our video, they can take it and say, hey, we can do it. Or they may say they can do it, but then they may outsource back to us, right? 
so it um i like actually let me show you something else okay. <laughs> because, um it, that answered this question when um we have done a, recently a prototype um, and we featured um the work uh, actually let me go uh, to the uh right to the to the virtual tour here can you see the virtual tour yes I mean, so I mean, this is a, a mashup you may think okay uh what am i seeing here you're seeing a home this is a, a an apartment and we did the, an experiment by adding 360 content we replaced the, the panels with uh, photos of Italy. I don't, okay. I'm Italian, but I don't have such a cool photos. So we partner with uh, a photographer in Italy, Pietro Madaschi. So he was very kind and he said, okay, uh, sure, Paolo, use, use them. And we, because we wanted to experiment something new, how can you navigate in an apartment, but actually you are in a different country. Mm, interesting. So, does it uh, is this a business uh, demo it is not however it's such a new thing that uh, attracted attention it m made people talk about you and then so it's all pr by the way that's not motherboard it's geocv okay which is a motherboard competitor so we have another person who's asking you for your customer database Give us a customer. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a joke. Well, the, the, uh, the, no, but let me answer this one. So the customer database is continuously changing. Today, you, you might have a relationship with a company. The only constant is change. Those persons in, uh, in these other organizations, they move. And they move sometimes, they move to different companies. And they remember about you, that you have done a mm -hmm. good job in the previous company. So never burn bridges. And that's the, 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 the usual, <laughs> the, the, the the usual suggestion. And make yeah. sure that you exceed the expectation. We always try to under promise and over deliver because if you do the opposite, you, you get yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, fired yeah, back done. to you. Yep. All right. Good the question, next one, yeah, next <laughs> one is, do you have a, you know, a percentage of your budget that you put for demo? So how much do you kind of, kind of how much a budget? So this is a, a it's, it's a good question. Uh, I'm, I'm not running the business. I'm running the business as a lifestyle business. If I were, and I have entrepreneurial spirit, somebody told me, but I'm not necessarily an entrepreneur like you, Vinet, right? You want to scale, you want to have a product. We yeah. are in the consulting business, creative people. I may spend money on something that I believe it's cool. I love it. And then uh, I, I drive a 2004 Toyota because mm. I bought uh, a, a new scanner. So this is my, <laughs> my, my way to do business. I don't drive any right. Tesla or anything. I just uh, pursue innovation because I believe in innovation and because it looks like it's, uh, it's fulfilling my, my, my lifestyle and it fits the family. And so it, it's a dif difficult to scale a creative business uh, if you yes. don't have a product. It's all about the people. Right, but still, what percentage do you think? What If you had to just, if you had to ballpark. I would say 10, 15, 20, 20%, 20, 20, if sometimes more. <laughs> <laughs> it, and, it, and it depends. It depends on the, on the times. Uh, it depends uh, if we are busy, we don't do prototypes because we are just busy doing it, uh, real projects. But during the down times, I drove from my saving accounts and I just keep spending on prototypes because I know that things we pick up right so this is a, a tactical question i don't think this is true but uh you can answer this i don't think oh that uh i don't I, so uh, can we can we index uh, elements in unity i i don't know the answer uh no, i don't, I don't so. know yeah so <laughs> I, I don't think it unity, does yeah unity is a package product so it doesn't but i think what uh and and kind of i think the the kind of customer that would go for your real kind of product, which is the unity. I think probably they're not looking for SEO as a way to kind of pop their content. No, it, the, the, the clients that come to us, they don't necessarily come through SEO. They come because uh, we publish something uh, that on, on, the, on social media, somebody talked about us on LinkedIn, uh, we, we, on, on Twitter or to, to the companies themselves, right? So. Oh, wow, wow. I just, I just went down. There's a bunch of questions, okay. Can we access, okay, 
All right, all right. So can we access your YouTube or is it all private? No, no, no. The YouTube is uh, you just uh, search for my name, Paolo Tosolini, and uh, all. So uh, the real projects uh, that we cannot talk about, we cannot publish. But every right. time we do a project uh, or a prototype, we try to document it with the a video. Party. And the video is important because it's something that can be shared internally, right? Some it's shareable. Yeah. So always a video, um, and it's uh, YouTube. Okay. And okay. So next one is here you go. I'm sorry, I can't see your your names because I think maybe you are messaging from a private group, and uh, yeah. So. Whoever this is. Okay, so th there is a, a question, question about the trackability because marketing departments, uh, rightly so, they want numbers. Yes. Uh, this is uh, a um, this is a good challenge. The tools that we uh, so in the case, for example, of a, of a three hundred and sixty uh, virtual events, we use Sigbeak, which allows you to track, and they also have uh, a, a heat map of where people click, so you could track it. For the sake of the prototype, we haven't gone down that path. And uh, it's my fault uh, sometimes not to uh, emphasize the trackability of, the, of, this, uh, of this. Because I, I f fall in love for the cool factor. Sometimes my yeah. business side uh, it, you know, concedes to the fact that I'm too much I, of a creative. I, I, think, I think we are all guilty of that. Uh, all right. I think this is the same thing. Have you thought of pitching tracking use data as an extra value? This is, uh, thank you for the suggestion. I think I should do that next time. Uh, next time. And it's something that I can, uh, yes, I, I need to improve on that side. Thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> right. Okay. I think I think the next question, I, I, I don't know, maybe I think all these three questions were, were by the same user because they're all about tracking. Uh, and I think this yeah, is. Yeah. And it makes it, complete it, sense. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, I it think. It makes complete sense. One of the things I would I would recommend, you know, is uh, is just using simple Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics is okay. the most powerful, uh, you know, tracking software. And so uh, we have, you know, for for our for our software itself, Teleport Me, we always thought, okay, we should add analytics, but there is only a certain amount that you can go in terms of, especially for marketing budgets. The the volume of people that go into virtual tools is really small, right? So you want to give them advanced tools to create better cohort analysis, better uh, timestamps, and so on and so forth. And for you as a virtual tool provider, or even for you, Paolo, to provide that separately, that kind of powerful analytics is almost impossible. Uh, you can provide basic stuff, okay, click here, click there, click there, but the volume is so low that you cannot really come mm -hmm. up with useful information. So anybody that's trying to sell to a large company that is marketing, I would recommend, highly, highly recommend using just Google Analytics. It is the most powerful analytics tool. Uh, and most marketing department people that work there know how to use this tool to extract the right information that they can use for their marketing purposes. So this is a very, it's a good, this is a good question. Yeah, no, it's totally relevant. Th th thank you for reminding me that I need to be more analytical in, in my creative <laughs> moments. All right. And I think this is also the same thing, but uh, yep, yeah, yeah, same. Okay, same thing. I, I get the uh, message. I I'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I work on uh, that. <laughs> for example, how long? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the same thing. So I think I think that's that's an important uh, question. Uh, and I, I my my experience has been Google Analytics. Uh, most marketing sales departments uh, are very very you they they know how to use google analytics in a way which is see in the end uh, like you said large companies want to sell to their bosses that is their customer you know it's like uh, vc funded companies their real customer is their investor right as much as they say we love your customer you know the customer does not is not that as important as the investor and similarly for larger companies the most important person is the boss about them or the boss about them whoever that is and so the the marketing and the and the analytics uh, is really important uh, for these people who are trying to be innovative and giving them the right tools to do it and the tools that they are uh, familiar with are is most important. And I think Google Analytics is something that uh, if anybody is thinking of 
going into the larger uh, thing. And obviously, you know, if you are in Europe, you have the whole GDPR issue. So that's another uh, constraint where you cannot track based on, unless the person gives you consent and there's a amount. It's a, it's a huge mess when you go to Europe. Uh, but uh, if, if you're in the U.S. and non uh, GDPR, com- you know, compliant countries, Google Analytics. Um, one more question is the, I think this is the last question they're going to take between AR and VR. Which one do you think has? Oh, I think everything froze here. So I, I'm going to talk anyway. Uh, the, the experience froze. So I don't know if you if you can hear me or not. So right now the we don't experience much demand of either VR and AR uh, because the people are mostly interested in the basics uh, of how to sell through their uh, traditional channels, uh, which is um, oh we can hear okay good because uh, uh, Vinetti is is frozen. It looks like that the priorities with COVID have swift uh, have, have changed, and um, uh, the the VR is less important. First of all, because you VR you have to touch something, you have to wear it, and then there are all sorts of you know contamination opportunities there. AR is I feel like it's the the next frontier. So if I had to put my best. I would be more on the AR side because AR you can use it in e-commerce. Uh, uh, although we haven't experienced that d- demand, also because we haven't looked potentially for, for those opportunities. But uh, if I had to choose of the two, uh, I would go more for AR. But right okay. now, the the I would say a- AR if it's something that needs to, it's coming. There are many other steps that. Uh, needs to happen before so to, yeah. to, to uh, there are other things that you can sell before selling something that is really uh, that is too ar that's too much yeah, too AR. Yeah. that said it doesn't mean that the, if you have a per, super cool solution you you could probably succeed but uh, um it hasn't happened to us that this is what i what i'm what i'm saying got it all right, I think I think uh, I kind of froze off in the middle, so I'm sorry about that. But I think people could hear you, so that's great. Okay, okay, uh, good. I continued. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's awesome. Uh, so I think we are done. I mean, we are done with the questions. So Paulo, thanks a lot for coming on on our live interview series, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope uh, yeah uh, we, could, we could we could really get some information, and I hope uh, the audience hearing it could uh, could benefit. Yes, and, and I love the question. Thank you for these questions. It makes me think uh, how important is, for example, analytics and so things that um, uh, be, as a creative mind, sometimes I, I just fall in love for a technology and I go down the path. Uh, another, thing, another feedback we got uh, is, uh, Paolo, are you resolving real problems? Why don't you start for the real problem as opposed from the solution? Real problems it, are boring. <laughs> first, are, first are boring. Second, we need to identify them. And then if we are not in those in, 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 specific in the shoes, yeah. Yeah. we don't know about those real problems every day. So sometimes being on the other side, we need to just seed and see what grows. Yeah. And if by seeding we accomplish a personal satisfaction, the team is satisfied, we are innovating, we continue growing, I feel like uh, we we are you know we reach happiness in in, in the business. Agree, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So, Paulo, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go, and then sounds you know, good. I'm, I'm gonna end the I'm gonna end, end the whole thing, and then I'm gonna thank you everybody on the back. It has been a pleasure. And everybody's thank everybody's thanking you for it, so that's great. All right, so Paulo, thank you. I was gonna say bye to you, bye, Paulo. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this and. Uh, there were some things to learn about how to be the innovator, uh, you know, create a uh, experience that you can sell as a freebie to larger customers. Uh, and I think, you know, that was the whole in- intention of this talk because uh, that's something that I, I personally feel that all of us in the groups uh, can achieve to do, uh, get larger clients, uh, use more, uh, you know, uh, innovative technology. And uh, Paolo is a great example of it. You know, I think it is it is tough, but it is possible. And uh, yeah, I, I'll see you next week. We. Have-